Ash, I, I was wearing something slightly cooler underneath this, but I spilled shawarma all over it. So I had to borrow my, my <sighs> basis my basis hoodie, which is an Inspector Gadget villain, apparently. But I'm mad for that. Well, well, you know, I'm Lebanese. So if you're spilling shawarma on anything, then I'm for you, man. Th that is to me is you could be naked and I would be like, it's worth it because you had delicious Middle Eastern garlic hummus, all of the things on you. And that makes uh, a good life, JP. Shukran. Shukran. Oh, I don't think I've ever had a shukran in my seven, eight years of doing <laughs> these interviews. Well, hello, my beautiful hello. friend. So nice to see you again. It's wonderful to see you. I'm very emotional. Thank you. Because I just listened to um, A, some tracks off the album, and then I watched a video of a greyhound who had a stroke and his, and his mum and dad didn't give <laughs> up on him, and they nurtured him back, and then he ran. By the end of the video, he was running, and I'm just like, this is all too much. Ash, that's too many emotions at once. You can't listen to my music and watch videos of rescue dogs. You gotta pick one or the other. You gotta pick. I'm a sucker. I know better than this. Yeah. But I have to say, and we know that you can can write an emotional, beautiful song, but it's a very beautiful album. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well done, mate. Thank you so much. I worked really hard on it for a really long time. I can't say it'll ever really bring people to tears the way a rescue greyhound could in 15 seconds but you know what we have to we have to know our lane i know my lane stick to your lane bro i get it you've done well i do have one point of contention i need to bring up with you though Tell me because in um, first of all we heard a snippet of more of you and we loved it so much that we then had to spend like 15 minutes going through all the album tracks trying to figure out which one and it was the very last one but we got there but the mm -hmm. lyric is when we're sitting in the shower talking and you stare at me, um, you can't be sitting in the shower, bro. That's fucking gross. You can't be sitting in the shower. That's unacceptable. You're doing it wrong. Have you never sat in the shower with someone and just chatted about life? Yeah, but one person's always not under the water and then you get cold and then I feel like there's probably germs on the floor and it's getting into your, your bits. Yep. Two shower heads. Oh, well, you're fancy, aren't you? I don't have, yeah, I've mean, got one shower there's head. Like, there's the handle and then there's the shower head. Mine's either or. You can't have water coming out of both. I feel like that's an option that you could just talk to a plumber about. You know what? You've absolutely made a great point because my husband and I have always said that one day we'll have a his and hers shower so we can't because we have showered together every day, but one person, mainly him, is inevitably not getting enough of the water on them. So we say one day we'll have both, but maybe a cheaper option is calling a plumber and saying, make it happen. Yeah. I'm not an authority on this, although I probably should learn more about showers because I, I have so much of my creative process happens in the shower. But I, I do think with proper initiative, any shower can be a his and her shower or his and his shower or hers and her shower. Oh, or a two-person shower. Yeah. I'm really inspired by your vision here. And I, I feel like if I can just borrow some of that self-belief, I too can reach the heights that you have reached and a girl can dream. That makes me so happy. And I, I hope I hope this comes together for you. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Um, I also love this album name because it's pretty much, it's my life, Dangerous Levels of Introspection, speaking of shower thoughts. For <laughs> me, it's shower, driving to work and middle of the night at about 3 a.m. Not in a depressing way. It's just when I seem to wake up and then go to the place, you know, the place. Yeah, absolutely. The, the whole album yeah. is How, the of what you were yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this, have you always been this person that has gone to dangerous levels of really yeah. just overthinking? Overthinker, overfeeler, overshare. It's been me since as long as I can remember. Um, for better or for worse. Like I, I think, I think there is a level of introspection, of analysis of your own emotions, of nostalgia that, that can make you more present in the moment. You know, that makes you deeper into your life and then there's a level of <laughs> nostalgia introspection analysis of your own emotions that can just ruin your whole your whole situation it, it just can take you so far out of the moment that you're ruining your life and i think that this album lives right on the line between those two on the precipice it's on the precipice good word precipice How good is that word? next time i tell this story i explain the album that way i'm going to use precipice yes but you have to say it like my friend george says it precipice I can't promise I'll do that, but I'll say it the way you said it. 
Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, great. Because I too, I too sometimes go to the bad place, but generally the good place because it's where the good things come. Being self-aware is a wonderful thing, but when you're too self-aware and you're beating yourself up over shit you can't change, that's when you've got to get out of the, you've got to get out. You've got to jump out and go, nope, nope, nope. Yeah, what a superpower it would be to have one without the other. To analyze your emotions mm. just enough that you could really feel them, but not so much that you're just drowning your own neuroses all the time. Mm. Do you know what I my have, friend taught me? Yeah, I can help you. See, I'm currently pregnant and I thought that when I got pregnant, I'd be the most anxious, crazy person in the world, right? And the first four weeks, I was like going to the bad place. I lived in the bad place. I was just, all I would do is imagine in worst case scenarios, right? And then my friend Anya said, when that happens, you've got to say out loud, don't go there. And I started doing that like a crazy person. When I noticed my brain going from the la, 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 happy to like the uh, bad, I'd go, don't go there. And even though you sound like a crazy person, it really works because it like tells your brain, nope, don't go there. I love that. I think there are so many things that can probably help us in our life if we're just okay with looking like a bit of a crazy person while doing it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> and I'm, I, for one, I'm very happy to look like a crazy person. I think it's liberating. Oh, is it what? It's the Honestly, best thing in the world. So many of the things that I used to dislike about myself have become what I've built the most beautiful parts of my life on. For example, when I was younger, I used to get made fun of for three things. I used to get made fun of for being a ginger, being a singer, and for being too sensitive. And flash forward to now, I've built almost my entire career on being a ginger, being a singer, and being too sensitive. Yes. Amen. Well, I have my husband has a ginger beard and it was a bit ginger when he's a kid and has ginger pubes. So I, every day, and I'm having a son every day, I'm praying to baby Jesus, like, please let him have red curly hair. Like to me, that is a one, a plus. I would die of happiness. That makes me so very happy to hear. And I, I hope that for your son as well. It's, it's been a good experience for me overall, the ginger life. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Um, I need to talk about one thing that when I read about, I was like the pang of jealousy came from my gut into my heart and out of my mouth because music nerds like us who grow up listening to music and appreciating guitar, especially are obviously obsessed with John Mayer. It's what we do. We're rocking heavy things. We're rocking continuum, even into a bit of battle studies. Maybe we love our boy, Johnny Mayer, and you got to work with him on this album. And I just need to know, I just need to know, just give me something They'll make me feel closer to John C. Mayer. Well, when we uh, when we did some uh, of our promo for Colbert, we're playing on Colbert together, me and John Mayer. No big uh, deal. Which is just, it's, I have what? not gotten over it because, you know, like you said, being a songwriter and finding continuum, I, I think I, I wasn't a songwriter yet. And then I found that album and I, and I thought, I, I want to do, I want to do that. How do I do mm. that? So, mm. but yeah, when we were when we did some of our promo, I would say I'm JP Saxon. He would say I'm JC Mayer because, you know, he joined my initial game. Um, Classic. It, I don't entirely know how to talk about it. It's been so special because I, I admire him so much. And he's been s such a generous, gracious uh, figure for me. He's uh, in, in, in this album. He came to the studio. He listened to the album, gave me his thoughts. He was so kind said so many nice things. Um, whenever I'm, in, I'm feeling kind of sad or down on myself now, I read back to some of the things he said. Don't tell him. It's embarrassing. I'm trying I won't, to play. I won't, I won't tag him on the video and put it on Twitter. I would never do that to you. <laughs> Please, you can. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, and he played on Here's Hoping, which is the fourth track on the album. And every time I, I get to him playing and I remind myself that that's John Mayer on my album, it, it is just, it's, it's quite an unexplainably exciting feeling. That's so cool. Am I allowed to ask what your favorite John Mayer song is? It's either, I mean... no, of course you can. It's either Stop This Train. Oh, yes. Or Edge of Desire, I think is an under- Controversial Edge of Desire. I love that for you though. It's a, that's one of my favorites. I don't think that one gets quite enough love. Agree. Uh, Absolutely agree. Too great. Atmosphere. 
oh my gosh, the very idea that you just can't even go to a city because you know you're breathing the same air as someone and they're and then when it goes to like the second bit, oh, I'm going to listen to it after this. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to it after this. And I'm going to weep for someone that doesn't even exist. <laughs> I mean, it takes a special kind of songwriter to make you go through a whole heartbreak. You're not even in. I'm not even I in it. I, I'm, I mean, with this album, I hope I can. I believe you can. Cause I, I had a, a moment like sitting in this studio and I like turned to my producers, Luke. And I was like, oh, you know that, oh, they're just like, Oh, you just you don't know what it is, but just it's an achy thing, and you did it to me. So but I'm very hormonal. So <laughs> I mean, whether whether you were an easy target or not, I'm still flat. <laughs> when I had come off the greyhound thing, so really, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't thought of it till this conversation we're having right now, but I do hope that there are people who are very, very in love, who hear, who hear this album and for 15 minutes feel heartbroken. And I hope that there are people who are very heartbroken who listen to this album for 15 minutes feel like they're very in love. I love that. What more could you wish for an album? What more? Plus, John May's already on it. So yeah. I agree. I wish all those things like for you as well. Thanks, Ash. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you making time to chat with me today. Thank you so much. And thank you for making this album and give my love to the world from me. Thank you. This is, um, it's really, really nice to talk to you again, especially because I think my Instagram algorithm knows that I'm a fan of yours because your interviews are always popping up and I always watch the whole thing. So it always shows me all of them. So ever since That's we last spoke, I've been watching all your interviews with everyone. So when I walked into this room and saw it was you on the screen, I was a little extra excited. And wish well, I wasn't well. my bass player's Inspector Gadget hoodie. I would have dressed <laughs> I up. Love it. If, I, if I had known, if I had put in the, I would have dressed up. I would have worn like a nice button up with some chains. Would have been cool. I said, Oh, some them. chains. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they're there. You just can't see them. For some just, let's make an agreement from now on. Whenever we're going to have an interview, we have to borrow someone else's five minutes before it starts. We have to borrow someone else's top to wear. And I think if we just go forward with that agreement, we're going to be fine forever. I think that's a great plan. I'm glad we agree on this, JP Sachs. Thank you for making time to chat to us at Ash Sunder Live. We love you and we love the album and you're the best and take care. Thank you, Ash London. Truly anytime. See you soon.